So in this question, we are asked to determine how much work is being done on the spelunker by the force lifting him up. We've drawn a free body diagram showing two forces acting on the spelunker. We have the upward tension force, and then we have the downward gravitational force. We know from the work kinetic energy theorem stated right here that the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy will equal the net work done on the spelunker. So in fact, what we're going to do is rewrite this equation. For the final kinetic energy, we'll have one half mass final speed squared minus, and then for the initial, it'll be one half mass initial speed squared. For the net work, that's going to be the work done by tension, which is what we're looking for in this question, plus the work done by gravity. Now, for the work done by gravity, we know that that would equal the force of gravity times the distance the spelunker travels times the cosine of the angle between the gravitational force and the displacement. Now, this spelunker is being lifted upward, so the displacement points straight up. Gravity, of course, points straight down, so the angle between the gravitational force and the displacement would be 180 degrees. So let's keep that in mind. Now because the question is asking us to determine the work done by tension, why don't we solve the equation for that? So let's subtract the work done by gravity on both sides of this equation. And then, as we stated, we can replace the work done by gravity with the expression of the gravitational force, mg, multiplied by the distance traveled, multiplied by the cosine of the angle between gravity and the displacement, which for part A will be 180 degrees. Now we've repasted the question below so we can remember what the information is. The distance traveled is 10 meters. The initial velocity for part A, because the spelunker is initially stationary, will be zero meters per second. And then he's accelerated to a final speed of five meters per second. Again, the distance traveled is 10 meters. We've stated the angle between gravity and the displacement is 180 degrees. We know that g is 9.8 meters per second squared. And then finally, the mass of the spelunker is given as 80 kilograms. So this is all the information for part A. Let's go ahead and plug it all into our equation. So there is all the information plugged in for part A. You might notice that because the initial speed is zero meters per second, this term will actually drop out. But when you punch this into your calculator, you should get 8,840, and then the standard unit of work is joules, and this would be the work done by the tension force in part A of the question. We can move on to part B, and the good news is the equation that we developed for part A, which I've copied and pasted below, can be used for parts B and even C as well. We just have to change the given information. So for part B, the spelunker is still being pulled for 10 meters, so that hasn't changed. Of course, his mass is still 80 kilograms g is still 9.8 meters per second squared, but this time he's traveling at 5 meters per second, so we can say his initial speed is 5 meters per second, but because he is lifted at a constant speed, that means the final speed will also be 5 meters per second. So we're going to plug in all those values into this equation right here to get the work done by tension. So all of the known values are plugged in. You might notice that these two quantities are identical, so when you subtract them, they're going to actually go out to zero. So that would save you a little bit of computation. But anyways, if you punch this into your calculator, you're going to get a value of 7,840 joules, and this would be the work done by the tension force in part B. We'll move on to part C now. So again, the same equation, 
this time the spelunker is decelerated to zero speed, so the final speed will be zero. The initial was the five meters per second that he was traveling at during part B. So now we'll plug in these known values into this equation above. And when you punch in these values, you should get 6,840. This will come out in joules. And this is the work done by the tension force in part C.